Hey everybody, welcome to the kitchen today. A little bit different, a little bit different today. Happy Monday. Um, welcome. Hopefully everybody had a good, had a good, good weekend. We are going to, well, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be trying, we're going to be finishing this sauce. So Bolognese sauce is a sauce that I actually picked from out of the new, the new book, um, Marcella Hazan's recipe for ragu meat sauce. And it takes, I've been, I haven't, I haven't been working on it all day, but it's been simmering in the pot since about 11 o'clock. Now, this is the type of sauce that takes the longer we can simmer it, the better. So it's been going since 11. I'll go over the ingredients of the, of this recipe and the process of it. Super simple. All of the ingredients and all of the full, like the full directions from the cookbook are down, down below. So super easy to make. The prep time takes no time at all and it's the the waiting is the waiting for the simmering so um welcome everybody though so if you have any questions as we go here do let me know hopefully everybody had a good weekend it's it's like 30 degrees outside here today and i don't know whether uh ragu is the most the best meal for a 30 degree evening but the 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 place here it's been simmering all day it smells amazing so we'll say hi to everybody let me know how your weekend was let me know what you're having for dinner tonight and we'll get started and so we do have lisa here so lisa yeah here we go it, it i it, it, any indication of the smell lisa it's going to be it's going to be perfect and uh christine we've got christine welcome christine thanks for joining me and uh, mom hello hello mom we're doing the recipe from the book brand new book today and Nadia's here. So Nadia will be my uh, pronunciation critic, uh, pronouncing Bolognese all the time. Um, but welcome. So let's, uh, without further without further ado, let's let's take a look at this sauce because it it smells awesome, and it looks great. So it's been simmering. Basically, I've actually had to have it uh, on the back on the back stove. Uh, for most of the day because I found my my hot plate is actually too uh, it's too hot so once we've made this we um, we've let it simmer so that is the the ragu right there looks um, looks good and oh hey Norman welcome uh, so I'm gonna move I'm gonna move this back uh, onto the back stove because the, but the back stove is a bit a bit cooler and then we'll, we're gonna boil the water in the front here for the uh, for the pasta and actually I just have a little pot for my pasta because I use the big one for I use the big one for the um, for the ragu but let's go over let's go over the recipe because it's it's so simple and uh, sometimes like like the one we did the tomato sauce I think we did with the three three ingredient tomato sauce the simplest ingredients are come out to, to be to be the best now this this um, the, this ragu has a couple of ingredients that you would no, wouldn't normally think to put into a few actually is a few to put into a like a meat sauce like this that um, that I thought okay well we're gonna try it so I followed exactly for the recipe it smells great um, basically the prep the preparation is um, super simple we take the, if you look down in the description below after this and you want to follow along, like I said, all the, all the, all the ingredients are there, everything else. Um, we chopping up a, uh, about a cup of, cup of onion, sorry, half, half cup of onion. I cut up a small, uh, small yellow onion. Um, might've been a bit more, but let's give it a take because we don't want to waste any onion or leave any little bit left over. So onion and then chopped up celery and carrot. So I diced it quite fine. As you saw in the sauce, it, it really breaks down most of it. That gets sauteed off in a tablespoon of vegetable oil and also a ta uh, three tablespoons of butter. I'm noticing a pattern in her recipes is using a lot of butter. So if you don't have butter at home, pick up a pound of unsalted butter the next time you are grocery shopping if you want to try some of these recipes. Butter. So we're sauteing off the vegetables in that till they're translucent. And then we're adding the uh, the ground beef and it's recommended to use like a chuck beef not the leanest meat as possible um, the chuck's going to have the fat in there for more, more some more flavor and i bought some uh angus angus uh ground beef to use for this um in there so it's roughly about um three quarters of a pound i had a little bit more 
so I've used it all. So the recipe is the general idea, and I think with this type of sauce, you can kind of adjust it a little bit, and you'll be you'll be okay. The smell smells good, so I think we're fine. That gets sautéed off, so it's browned, and then to that you actually add, and this is kind of the weird ingredient is um, you um, you add a cup of milk, uh, whole milk. So I used uh, two percent milk. You add a cup of that, and then you stir it in, and you reduce the milk to almost to basically all the liquid to almost zero uh, into the into the uh, in the pot. After that, this is another one of the another one of the ingredients. I'll grab one. Is um, it's here. And I would never think to put this in the sauce as well, but you do a, a quick, uh, a quick grind of uh, fresh nutmeg goes in after the milk is reduced. Gives it an interesting, it's interesting smell. With nutmeg, usually this is used in, in baking a lot more, but it's in this sauce, so a little bit different. Normally you wouldn't, I wouldn't think to put milk or nutmeg into a, into a tomato sauce. Uh, so we did that and you can grate this the fresh, like whole nutmeg, it grates really well on the good old fashioned microplane. So we use this for that to grate in there. And, uh, okay, and if you have questions, stop me as we go here, but we're all, this is almost it. So once the nutmeg's in there, once the milk is in there, the milk, the milk does reduce. And then you add a cup of white wine. So a cup of white wine, reduce that down and it's kind of a pattern here, right? Adding ingredients, reducing down, down to almost nothing. And then after the wine is reduced, you put a can, uh, use a can of, um, you would add a can of the, a nice imported Italian uh, peeled whole tomatoes. I crush these up, you crush them up beforehand, add them to the sauce. And then from there, once the tomato, like once it comes up to temperature, you turn it down to as low as possible as you can get on your stove where it, it's just barely, barely bubbling. And you kind of saw when I showed at the beginning, it was just barely, barely bubbling. And then you let that sit like that and give it a stir every once in a while. You let it sit for as long as possible. So I started making this this morning at about 1030. And by the time I had everything kind of ready to go and just simmering, it was just after 11. So it's been simmering for about six hours now, uh, just to simmer down. Now, if it, if it starts to lose some of its, um, uh, the liquid will obviously reduce down. If it's, if it gets too dry, you can add in the, basically add in the can of tomato to wash it out a little half, like a half a cup of water, stir it around, add the water into the, into the sauce. And, uh, it will just do that. And you have to, I had to do that a couple times just cause it dries, dries, does not get, doesn't dry out, but you don't want to burn on the bottom and it gets too thick. So it's got to be a nice, nice uh, consistency. If you're buying tomatoes, splurge a little bit and buy a, a good imported whole tomato. Uh, the tomato in the tomato juice is like night and day, uh, the, t the taste in a sauce. And I've noticed that af after trying a, a few recipes with, with, with some good tomatoes, um, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, so basically now all we're going to do is we've got to get this finished off is we got uh, some water going here. Now traditionally uh, bolognese would be served with a, like a taglet, taglatelli pasta, like a wider noodle. That's kind of the traditional uh, pasta to do that. Um, I was going to actually make some today, but the grocery store, I ordered flour for it, but it, it, they didn't have it. So... I couldn't make pasta today, um, but I have some rigatoni and I'm picking this, I'm picking this one uh, because it's nice because when it, when you cook it, it's got, it's, it's, it's a big, it's got like, you know, rigatoni has got the big, the big hole and it's going to be nice with this sauce because all the little bits and pieces of sauce are, is going to be able to go into, into all the holes and nooks and crannies of this pasta. So I think that'll be tasty. And oh, Lisa, yeah, I heard. Hopefully, you feel better. I heard from Norman that you're not feeling well. I've had um, I've had that before, and it's not fun. Not fun. And Christine, good question. So, 
the price is about, it's about, I think it's, well, I'm trying to remember here what, what it is. It's a, probably about over double what you would normally pay for um, just a regular can of Can like Canadian whatever tomatoes. Um, yeah, about double, double or more. Um, uh, sometimes you can find them on sale. So you buy, I buy a few, but, um, you look at it and you go, it's worth, it's, 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 it's one thing that's worth the, worth the price spending a bit more money on, on the richness of it is, is night and day between a regular, you can notice it even just opening it up. You can, the smell and just the, the, the color of the sauce is, is much, much nicer. So we're going to cook that with some, for rigatoni, you could use. Another, I mean, you can, I mean, tagliatelle is obviously the, the traditional with this one. Um, but that being said, you, you're kind of free to do whatever you want with pasta. And I wouldn't necessarily do something like, like an angel hair with this. It's a bit too fine. You want it, you want kind of a bit kind of chunkier pasta. Um, uh, farfalle, which is like the butterfly shaped pasta would be nice with this one. Um, maybe a penne. But I think something with a bigger, bigger hole to kind of hold the sauce more would be would be better. Um, the book actually recommends. Uh, da, 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 let's just see here because I did read that. Um, uh, also said it would be really good with uh, with a tortellini. So if you have a, I mean obviously yeah with a with a meat tortellini it'd be meat overload. But you might be able to find a nice cheese cheese tortellini for this, and uh, that would be really tasty. So if you are looking for a, a book with some interesting interesting recipes definitely this is uh this is good we tried one the other day as well with i'm just going to put in the pasta now this bowl i'm oh, sorry this pot is a little bit small but i think it'll be okay because i use my big pot for cooking the for cooking the uh the sauce all day So that will go in. This is going to take about 12 minutes. So we're going to finish it with, we're going to finish it with some, at the end, we're going to finish the pasta uh, with, we've got some uh, uh, more, more butter. Here we go. There's a pattern, more butter. We're going to finish it with a little bit. We're going to toss it in the pasta. A little bit of butter as we toss it and then some fresh grated parmesan cheese on top and i do like some cracked pepper so a couple of uh, turns of cracked pepper on on top and then we're done so we'll have that once this uh, pasta is cooked um, i was talking about before i put the pasta in about another recipe in here i tried a uh, like a cabbage and risotto soup the other day and it was a little bit different than a it was it was really tasty <laughs> really really tasty so of the two recipes so far, this is the third from this book that I've tried. Two out of two is really good, so I'm, I'm optimistic. I think we're gonna be in for a treat tonight with this one. Um, but it was like a, ca a smothered cabbage with risotto soup. And it was almost like a, we had the risotto in the channel before, and you remember what the risotto looked like. It wasn't, um, it was kind of, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a soup. Uh, it was kind of a creamy, creamy pasta dish, essentially. The, the cabbage and, uh, rice soup was like that, similar, but a bit more soupy, and, but you would still have it in a, you could almost have it on a, not a plate, but a, but a, like a wide bowl. And, uh, cause it had, it was finished with cheese, a little bit of butter. And, uh, it was, it was really, really nice. I had the, I had leftovers today. I had that for lunch. So, so good, uh, good book to pick up. I'm looking forward to doing some more. We have to change this channel into a, um, into an Italian cooking channel at the rate, at the rate we're going. <laughs> All right, that's cooking. Let me get this, make sure this is on. Yeah, it's just literally bubbling. Just every few seconds, a little a little bubble. And I don't know, you know what? I, uh, that's a good question, Christina. I was gonna, I, I was gonna message Stephanie on Facebook, but I, I didn't and I, I forgot before we had to go live. And um, it's, I think this is gonna be a moaner and she's gonna miss out. Um, uh, Nadia, so if you want the recipe for this one, it's down in the description after. And, 
you can check that out. So it's all, all the ingredients are there, but I'll, I'll send you some ones that are, that are popular or the ones that I like that I've tried. There's, I mean, there's hundreds in the book, so I've got my work cut out for me. There's also some, there's also some like sal there's all sorts of things in that book. So interesting, but I thought, I thought trying the, I think trying the, like the classics is always kind of fun to try these, these recipes because a lot of times too, with these, you can, you start as the base, right? And then you kind of can go, you go from there. Whereas like this sauce is used in, if you, there'll, there'll be leftover for sure with this, but this sauce is also used in the lasagna recipe as the, as, the, as part of that. So you can kind of start the, with the basics and do the building blocks for other recipes, much like the one I did the other day, not on the channel, but for, on the weekend here with the, the cabbage and, and rice soup, it started off as a recipe for just the cabbage as a, as a vegetable side, but then it works into, well, you can have, if you have this cabbage made, you can make this, make this soup with it. So it kind of goes, goes from there. So it's kind of neat to try these different recipes that are the, ba the basics and kind of the really well-known ones. Um, and then kind of expand from there, uh, with the, I mean, with the, with the bolognese, you could also do, I mean, it makes lasagna, but if you wanted to kind of spice things up, I know like we always kind of do, do peppers and stuff, but you could make, add some chilies to it. If you want to make it spicy, you know, that kind of stuff too. So, and I do need an Italian apron. I need one with the Italian flag on Italian days. I have to maybe pick a day, Nadia, that's Italian. Although we, we do have a lot of pasta. We do at home, even the dates that we're not cooking live here, we cook pasta quite often, um, or we'll do pasta, pasta salads, that kind of stuff, quite a, quite a bit. It's a pretty simple dish. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty simple dish to cook, and if you're in a hurry, or uh, it's not that expensive too for certain things. And Lorenzo's here watching. Hey, Lorenzo, <laughs> do you like uh, what kind of pasta do you like, Lorenzo? I don't know what that means, but it probably means I pronounce it some, some words wrong. <laughs> Let's uh, see, we're just cooking, we're just cooking. This is gonna steam up the, ca the camera. That's why I'm not showing it, but it's just the water, the water boiling there for the, uh, for the pasta. <laughs> and uh, I haven't made pasta yet. I think, didn't you do that one time on your channel, Christine? I think if I remember correctly, or maybe you just messaged it to me. I haven't. Um, I, I, ha I haven't done that. It's interesting. Um, uh, oh, he's going to laugh to you, Lorenzo. He doesn't like any, he doesn't like any kind of pasta. You're watching the wrong, wrong show, Lorenzo. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, it's funny. You read, you're reading through this book and being, uh, she's, you can tell she's opinionated in what you shouldn't, should and shouldn't do. And, and one of those was, if you're making pasta, the only other ingredient that you should put in, that you should put in pasta is if you're making like a green, like the spinach pasta, the rest is just, she's like, the rest is basically just a waste of time. So it's kind of interesting. Even, even like, I know I've seen in restaurants and seen when we've been on holidays and stuff is the, um, uh, the, where they add this, the ink, the squid ink pasta and make like the black pasta, even that she's like, not even that. So only spinach, but I haven't had it, but maybe something interesting to try. Maybe like, is it like, I guess like maybe a more of a dessert or something like that. And Lorenzo, Lorenzo, if you maybe if you were here, you could you might change your mind with with the with the uh, with the meat sauce with ragu. You never know. But I know your mom makes a pretty good uh, a pretty good lasagna from what I've what I've heard. <laughs> no pasta. So that's just going. You do have to watch the sauce to make sure what I find is with your stove, just really keep an eye on things throughout the day. Don't just leave it on low uh, and ignore it because it might not be quite hot enough. I find it, I find the, you notice when you have stuff cooking for a long time on different stoves, especially that they are electric, um, the temperatures can vary. It seems like they vary throughout the days if it's been on a long, a long period of time. So I've had to kind of just double check it every once in a while, I'll turn it up a little bit just so it keeps bubbling. You don't, there's nothing, be nothing worse than letting it sit there all day on, on like on low, low simmer, but it, it, it's almost off, you know? So you want to make sure that keep an eye on that. If you have gas, it won't be as much of a problem because the gas will, will stay more consistent. Okay. Let me see. So sweet or savory. Yeah. Okay. I have to try that. I wonder if it's, is it must be cocoa in there or something. Cause I do have cocoa. 
in the uh, in the uh, in the cupboard. Yeah, interesting. That might be kind of good with a nice. I'm trying to think what kind of sauce, what kind of sauce you would put with that. Sweet might be kind of weird for dessert. I like more kind of like custardy desserts. And this would also be good with some nice, nice baguette of uh, like a nice piece of bread and garlic toast. But we didn't. Uh, what I find is it's hard to get. It's not hard to get. I shouldn't say that. Um, we order. We do the online. Um, we do the online ordering for groceries, but what I find a lot of times is we'll go pick it up early, like one of the first pickup times, early in the morning. But it's hard to get, it's hard to get bread at that time because a lot of I guess they haven't. It's not either been baked yet or it hasn't arrived hasn't arrived to the grocery store yet uh, by the time you're picking it up because I guess they have to pack it everything ahead of time, right, before your pickup. And a lot of times we'll try to order like I'll try to order, um, I'll try to order. Uh, a baguette or even even loaf of bread or something and they just don't have it available because it hasn't arrived yet so and there we go yeah mom's been to italy a few times and i know nadia has been been to italy a few times as well yeah i don't think i don't well Maybe the sauce will be close, but it's always it's always different when you're there. You you can follow the recipe the same, you know that you want, but I think when you're when you're actually in the country where things are things are actually from, it um, it always seems to taste better, right? Even if you have the exact same ingredients, there's just something about it. Especially when you have someone that's cooking it that's been doing doing the same the same dish for so long and learning learning it, and they've kind of mastered it, right? Um, just certain things that you can't uh, you can't replicate at home, unfortunately. But I guess that makes it so you want to go you want to go and uh, go visit other places. So let's so cocoa in the main. Okay, interesting. You make it sweet. Add syrup or sugar. Yes, maybe honey or something. Yeah, interesting. Savory with pesto. Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, I found, I don't know if please all watch, but I found, um, I did a video um, as I'm, as I'm walking out of the, out of the screen here, I did a video on the channel. So check it out. Check it out after. Um, cause I went to the spice store here on the weekend and I, I went to the spice store just to buy the, 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 the nutmeg that I needed for this, for this recipe. And I walked out with like eight other spices and, and stuff and pepper. So, um, spent too much money, but I, they had these, these came in and this is so interesting. They're called, um, I might be pronouncing them wrong, but T, 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 T -mut peppercorns. Let me see if you can see, this isn't in the recipe today, but they are, um, a Nepalese spice. Uh, you grind them. They look similar to peppercorns because they're, well, they call them peppercorns. So they're very similar, must be related. They look a little bit like a, a Szechuan peppercorn. And they apparently have the same kind of, uh, you may not be able to see. Let's just show you here. Very small, black. But they're almost like, they almost kind of open up like the Szechuan peppercorns. But the interesting thing about these is... Uh, they say they're good for, uh, like you grind them up and put them in soups and stir fries and, and chutneys and that. But the interesting, the interesting thing is they smell like grapefruits. It's, it's the weird, it's the, it's the weirdest, uh, it's the weirdest thing. So it smells like grapefruit. So I, I, tr I got those. They just got those in the, they had just got those in the store. I guess they haven't had them before. Everybody's talking about Rome. So this is good. The, the recipe is making everybody think of Italy and when people can travel again. That's always good. Just giving the pasta. I'm stirring this a bit more than usual because the, the pot is, I need, I guess, well, I don't need another big pot, but normally this would be in a bigger, a bigger pot or I'd be cooking less pasta, but I find it's just easier to cook the, it's just easier to cook the whole, the whole uh, box because if you leave half of it, it just, 
you always end up with little bits and pieces of pasta. So, and yeah, Norman. So everybody loves everybody loves everybody loves Rome. And Nadia has has fam has yeah your all the family there. That would be the trip to go to. Would be go make friends with Nadia, because he. Cat, cat scratching at the door. Make friends, make friends with Nadia because uh, she can. You can then go to Italy with her, and then you can, then you can visit all the, uh, all the cool places, and get and get actual home home cooked home cooked uh, meals. And uh, oh yeah. Uh, so if you find, hold on, Christine, I have to, I have to find them again. Um, see if I can focus. Team, team, no, I might not. T there we go. T I M U T. I've never heard of them before. Um, and. Uh, they say infused in oil for salad can be interesting. Um, I guess the most similar kind of thing is uh, like a Szechuan peppercorn, but maybe not quite as, well, not, the Szechuan is not really hot, um, but kind of similar to, I think it has the same effect in your mouth. Like if you've ever had a Szechuan peppercorn and it, it kind of like puts your mouth, it kind of puts your mouth to sleep. So I'm gonna have to figure out a recipe to try with those for sure. Okay, this is coming along. Not quite ready. And yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can check them out. I, uh, if you look on my last video, Christine, I have the all the spices that I got, and in the description there is a there's a link to the spice uh, store, uh, so you can check it out there. And then you can do order. They do do orders and shipping with Canada Post. They do ship to Canada. So you can, uh, you can um, get them that way. Uh, or if you just want, if you want some, let me know. I can always run over there and pick some up and ship them that way too. But I think the shipping's free. Like I think the shipping doesn't cost anything anyway. So, and then that would probably save me, save me money because if I go to the store to pick up one thing for you, I'll walk out with 10 things for me, so. <laughs> What's everybody, I don't think I asked what everybody's having for dinner tonight. It's so hot everywhere, people probably aren't, aren't super hungry. gonna give this a taste I never timed the pasta I, I guess should I should start mm. almost maybe like two minutes two or three minutes I think I always say that and then it takes longer anyways too but it does take longer in this because it's not the biggest pot And when we get it ready, we'll we'll saute off a little bit. We'll use the saute pan. We'll saute it off, heat everything up, and then we'll plate it in a nice bowl for uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I know I know now. Yeah, I'm well. I'm hungry today though, so that's that's okay. I'm any, I'm looking forward to trying this. And then whatever's left over, we'll just put in the fridge. So this this one this sauce. Uh, it'll last a few days in the fridge. You don't want to keep it too long because it's meat, obviously, in the fridge. But it'll last a couple days for sure. Um, and if you want, you could always you could always freeze it, put it in separate small containers, and you could freeze it quite easily. It's going to heat up quite well. Um, I don't think there's going to be much left after the next couple days. So, and uh, yeah, that's exactly it with Costco. That's like every store. <laughs> I, one thing, I, one thing, one thing though I've noticed is like going, doing more online ordering. And this is what I like about it. Is I mean, sometimes it's obviously you don't get what you always want, or they don't have the they don't have the, 
the the ingredients you're looking for, but I find I'm spend you're spending less on groceries. At least I, at least at least we are here um, because you're not you're just buying what you're what you're needing, right? So you know what you're out of, and you're not walking through the aisles going and then you're you know you they market them so well, right? And you're like, oh, I need this, I need that, and you're all of a sudden buying all these other uh, other things you actually didn't go in there to go. I mean, perfect example is the spice store, right? Um, so that that I've noticed with groceries have actually have actually uh, gone uh, gone down. So and uh, which is uh, which is kind of good in a way if you're trying to budget. But Costco, yeah, Costco is br uh, brutal for um, overbuying. You can't well everything. You buy two things and it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> It's such big, big quantities. And that sounds really good, Christine. Steak sandwich. Oh, that's what you want. Oh, oh, you're putting a hint out to Dean. I see. And did you make uh, focaccia? I have to do more focaccia on the channel. I did the test recipe and it was a success. So maybe, maybe I'll do, just trying to change things up a little bit. That's why I kind of did this one ahead of time, just to do some different things to show. But maybe what I'll do on Wednesday is I can film a, I've got a great focaccia recipe, but it needs it needs uh, about 24 hours to proof because it, it proofs in the fridge. So it's simple that way because you can you can do it all one day and then you just, you just throw it into the fridge. You don't have to worry about it until you want to cook it. Uh, so maybe what I can do on Wednesday is I'll film tomorrow and post it, just the beginning of it, get it into the fridge, and then on the Wednesday live is maybe just cook some cook some bread uh, together. That might that might be something that can work. But I think it's always kind of weird with bread with a little bit of proofing. It has to sit outside of the. Uh, no, it'll work. I can pull it out of the fridge a little bit early and get it kind of ready to go, and we can finish it because in the oven it only takes about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, so we can do that maybe something a little different, um, and then uh, I don't know what we'll we'll have with it. We had um, we cooked it and had uh, like fresh made um, tuna salad, and had uh, sat on the patio and had uh, fresh focaccia with tuna salad. But a steak sandwich sounds good too. I haven't had a steak in a long, long, long time. I haven't had beef in a long, long time. That's why someone. I forget who asked me. Oh, it was Christine. You asked me uh, before the show. You asked you asked if we were going to be making vegetarian bolognese, but no, full on meat. We haven't had um, we haven't had uh, beef for a while. So this is probably the first time in a, in a month or so, maybe longer. And Nadia had a salad. That looks good. Oh yeah, you sent me the picture. Your salad looks good at your parents. Um. Yeah, having a steak. I kind of feel like, now I feel like steak. Oh, hey, Sharon, welcome. Oh, so new visitor. So everybody say hi to Sharon. Hi, thanks for watching. We're, we're kind of doing a bit different today where I kind of did, the, usually we're cooking from start to finish in an hour, Sharon, but this, this today, um, I uh, started a sauce this morning to taste so i figured we just finish it off on on the live stream so i'm just gonna check the pasta hmm. which is done too busy yapping it's not overdone but it's just in time but uh if uh sharon if you're looking for if you're looking for the recipe it's all in the description of the video And Dean wants steak too. Look at that. So there we go. There's still the focaccia one. Yeah. I'll just do that one to the channel. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll try that. All right. Let's get uh, let's get busy here. Let's just make sure I got all your questions. Pam's here. Hey, Pam. Everybody's coming in late. That's okay. Because Pam, you just came just in, just in time. Oh, okay. Well, welcome, Sharon. Yeah, so it's a friend of my mom's. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Recipe ingredients and stuff is all down in the description, so you can check it after. But let's, um, because we're we're almost done here, let's uh, let's get this uh, plated up. So Pam uh, and Sharon both came right at right at the right uh, 
right at the right time. <laughs> so we'll get everything in the in the in the plate. Let me get the cheese. Let me get the cheese out of the fridge. Parmesan. Fresh Parmesan cheese. Yeah, I won't comment on that, Pam. I know. Grab a glass of wine. Have some pasta. So we're just going to warm up. Uh, warm up the pan. With some sauce. Get the sauce nice and hot. And then, as my back is to everybody, but some nice scoops of the rigatoni. Give it a stir. And the butter, just a little pat of butter, just to melt in there. And just give it a good toss to make sure everything's coated with the pasta. And we'll put it on a plate. So my tongs there. Oh, what's beeping? No, the beeping, Nadia, is the pan. If I lift the pan off the, off the burner, it, uh, it beeps. So nice rustic looking pasta dinner. Yeah, so I have to just turn it off in order to turn it off in order to uh, stop it from beeping. And then we're going to give it some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. on top. And some cracked pepper. And uh, it's smelling good. We'll give you a close up. Let's, uh, there we go. Bolognese pasta, meat sauce, ragu. This smells, this smells really, uh, really good. I think, uh, if, I don't think Stephanie's here, but she would get definitely a moan from this one. Let's grab a fork and give it a try. Uh, smells, it actually, it smells really good. <laughs> Thanks, Nadia. Pretty good. Coming from, so hopefully that would impress your family. Let's give it a try. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was worth the six hours of, of simmering, let me tell you. Mm. I'll go out on a limb and say probably the best, the best like ragu I've ever tasted. The best I've, the best I've ever made myself. Mm. Mm. You have to try this. So take a look at the description of all the recipe. And, and next time you, you want to try it, try something that's, that is simple to make. And then you just need some time at home 
when you're around to be able to give it a stir every once in a while and give this, uh, give this, um, I won't eat any more. So it is delicious. It is delicious. Um, it is mouth watering and I'll have one more bite just to torture you before we, before we sign off. But, um, give this one a try. Mm. There's not going to be any leftovers, but, um, <laughs> that's it. I want to, I'm going to sign off fast because I want to, I want to eat all this and not look, not look bad in front of you all for eating. So thanks for joining me. Uh, if you do have questions about this recipe, by all means, let me know, uh, obviously in the comments later and I can help answer them for you. Just follow, literally follow the directions as it's stated and you, you can't go wrong with this. So we'll leave it at that everybody. Thanks for everybody that, that came and dropped by. I see we've got 12 people watching. So that's awesome. Thanks to the new people that came and, and visited. If everybody can, before we go, just hit the, hit the thumbs up before you go. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And, um, that's it. So I will be sending uh, Nadia a pic later of an empty of an empty dish. Thanks everybody for 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 joining me on this one. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this was a lot of fun to a lot of fun to make, but it's going to be a lot of fun to eat. So until the next one, we'll see you later. And check out some of the past videos. I've got the Arrow Garden videos up there that are going through, and I've got the spices that we picked up as well. Um, so some other stuff to watch in the meantime before we come back on Wednesday for the the next live. So don't forget to thumbs up. Thanks everybody. And, uh, have a great night.